All right, so let's add the account page. So we come up here, we add a new custom page. This is just gonna be called account. And what we wanna do is start adding some components. We don't actually need to do anything else there. So we can start adding some components. The first is going to be a container. And this is going to have within it a title element. So this is going to be the name of the client. The subtitle is going to be the name of the person. And the emphasis is going to be what plan they're on. All right? So they're on the light plan. This is Marble Maestro. That's the company. And Matteo Marbello is the person we are currently using the app as. We want to make this, I believe it's extra small. Let me just check what I had previously. No, I just had small. Okay. Fair enough. The image, we want to make this the company uh, or client logo. And we want to make this rounded. And with title elements or components, let's call them, you can add buttons. However, when you add more than two, you start getting this drop down, and I don't want that. So what I usually do, rather than adding uh, actions to the title bar itself, what I will do is go to the container, and I'll make this a two to one width container, and come here to add a button block. Then I will set it to align to the right, and this just gives me way, way, way more flexibility. And it means no matter how many buttons I create and show and hide, all of the buttons will be visible all of the time. And for this particular case, that's exactly what I want. So speaking of buttons, let's set up these buttons. So we've got two buttons. The first one is gonna be called upgrade plan. And all we're gonna do here is compose an email exactly the same as before. We're gonna be sending it to admin the subject is going to be, I'd like to upgrade my plan. Now, we could very, very easily build a slide out, allow them to select what plan they want, and then it sends an email and da 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 da, -da on the back end. Um, but for you know today's tutorial, I'm just keeping it as an email that gets composed for them and that they can obviously edit before they send. So what we want to do here is include the upgrade email and... That's it, that's what we wanna do for that one. The next button is going to be called edit account. And this is going to show an edit screen for the client, not the user, for the client as a slide in. So when we click this, you can see, and um, what I'm gonna do is rename this to edit account, right? And on submit, we're just going to do a very simple um, edit account. I'll call this client edit account. Now we don't really need to set up a webhook for this to notify us when they edit their account. You could, but I don't see the point. So all we're going to do is close the overlay and just show a notification um, that says account edited. Pretty straight forward. So we want to just add a few more fields here to allow them to edit their account. Uh, we'll do an image picker for the logo. And we'll add a file picker for the brand guidelines. And I'll add a link field or just a text entry actually for the website. And so I'm not sure if I had this all as required, um, but I know, obviously the name is required. I think the logo should be required. I'm just gonna make them required. You can change this if you want, but the only one I'm not gonna make required. Let me see what I had earlier. I'm fairly certain I had it required. Yeah. The only thing that wasn't required was the um, brand guidelines document that they can upload as a PDF. But besides that, everything is and I think should be required. So that's it. They've got this button that they click and it will 
compose an email for them saying, hi, I'd like to upgrade my plan. And then they have a button that they can click to edit their account. Um, and this is editing the client, not the user. So as far as I'm concerned, that's all we need for that top bar. Then what we want to do is add a component called big numbers. And what we want to do is remove this title. We don't actually need a title and we're going to add four items. The first item is going to be the request quota. The second item is going to be the requests made. The third item is going to be the requests left. And the fourth item is going to be the total requests completed. Then we're just going to add some description. So this is going to be the description for this is going to be for the month, right? Because if we typed in, for example, this, you could, you could type this month, but we've already generated a column or a field that gives us the current month and year. So why don't we just use that? So let's say the current month, September 22, and we'll do that again, current month. We do this again, current month, and this one we just want to say all time. So this gives the user a clear overview of how many they have total quota for September 2022, how many requests they've made, how many they have left, and how many have been completed all time. The next thing we want to do is simply add a container. And we're going to split this container in two by clicking this layout button in two. We want the background to be card. So we want it to kind of replicate what this is. And then we're going to add a few little components. We're going to add two headlines. The first headline, which we're going to make extra small, is going to be the brand summary. Uh, one thing we want to do is align all of the items in this particular container to the top. For this container, we don't mind if the buttons are in line with the middle of the container. But for this one, we want to make sure everything's aligned to the top. So we change this also to extra small. And this one is going to be the brand guidelines. So we want to add another little snippet of text underneath the brand summary. And you guessed it, this is going to be the brand summary. We do want to make this smaller though. I usually like making it footnote size. Um, although I think I had it small before. I mean, it's really, it's just a matter of taste really. Underneath the brand guidelines, we're going to add an image and this image, the source of this image is not going to be their profile photo. It's going to be the brand guidelines document that they will upload during onboarding. We haven't created the onboarding yet, but they'll upload this during onboarding or they can edit the account and change that file here. So the only thing we need to do is if the brand guidelines don't exist yet because they're not required, we want to hide this particular title. So this component should only be visible when brand guidelines is not empty. And I believe that this page is now complete. So let's do a quick recap. We've built out all, besides the welcome onboarding page, we've built out all of the pages that the user needs. They have a dashboard where they can submit new requests and view existing requests, as well as leave feedback and all of that. They have the results page, which is just an easy way to see all of their final results in one page. And then they have the account page where they can view their statistics, upgrade their plan or edit their account, that sort of thing. So we are done in terms of the client side. What we're going to do next is build the admin side. That's going to consist of two pages. Now you can customize. There is one more page that already existed and that's the profile page. We don't really need to change this that much. We can leave it as is. I mean, the only thing you could, you would need to do if you wanted to is just change this to a slide in so it's more consistent with um, with everything else and maybe add some additional fields here but we can get to that at the end it's not really important they'll spend most of their time on these three pages so we've done those three let's move on to the admin side pages starting with an overview of all the requests that we've received
If you enjoyed that video or you found it useful, then I highly suggest you subscribe and hit the bell icon because I have a ton of low code videos and tutorials in the pipeline for you. And if you like the idea of becoming a low code developer who can create anything their mind can imagine without code, head to lowcode.com and sign up for one of our online boot camps. See you next time.